let's get started, everyone. Hello, um, I am Noah. I'm going to give you a little talk today about uh, building reactive web apps with Crystal and Svelte. So I'm going to jump right in and share the screen and make sure that we can all see it. Okay, uh, if there's any problems with audio or screen sharing, holler in the chat and we will go through this. Um, Okay, quick introduction. Uh, I am Noah Lehmanhaupt. Um, I am my day job is a head of product at a small startup. Um, I'm not an engineer by trade, although I've been a nerd my whole life. Um, I studied business and psychology in university, not computer science, but I've been um, exploring and really excited about uh, development work and engineering work um, for uh, many years. Um, and I really started for real fairly late in life, relatively speaking. I'm 42 now and I started uh, with uh, Ruby on Rails back in 2012. Um, this is also my first tech conference talk. I've given a bunch of regular talks at regular conferences, but this is the first time I've given a talk at a tech conference. I'm very excited about this. I hope you'll bear with me. Um, and I'm gonna, that sort of leads into what my totally selfish motivation for doing this is, which is that I wanna level up um, and I want you guys to level up. Um, I'm at the, what, what I think many folks call the advanced beginner stage of learning, which is the most dangerous uh, time of learning to be a developer because uh, you think you know enough to, for example, give a talk at a crystal conference. Um, and I've found that really the best way to improve um, is to struggle through a problem and really kind of put yourself out there, um, but then get feedback on better ways to uh, solve the problem. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bunch of things over the next 20 minutes or so, and I want you all to tell me what I'm wrong about and why I'm wrong. And uh, I think that'll be helpful for everybody. Um, I, I think this applies to everybody. You know, I think the best way to learn is to participate. Uh, and I'm glad that everyone is at this conference, and I hope folks will continue to continue to learn. Um, so I've been exploring Svelte recently, which is a front end UI framework. Um, you know, I discovered Crystal uh, and fell in love with it. And I think many folks will talk to you about why they love it so much. Um, but uh, Svelte is a really, really cool front end framework. Um, it's like Angular or React or Vue, um, but uh, it's quite different in that most of the heavy lifting is done at compile time. Um, it, unlike Angular and React and Vue, which have pretty heavy libraries that run on the client, Svelte has a compile step uh, beforehand, um, which I think improves things and speeds things up, uh, not unlike the way TypeScript works. Um, Svelte support, supports both JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, and it does some pretty cool stuff um, with server-side rendering. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what all this stuff means uh, with something called client-side hydration. The best part about it is that it's component-based. Uh, and when you're building web apps, I, I think one of the struggles that people have had for many years is how to split up your HTML, how to split up your CSS. And there's a whole bunch of different frameworks for working on this. Um, I know React has, has introduced a lot of folks into the world of how component-based frameworks work. Um, but I'm going to take a beginner approach on this and show you a little bit about how Svelte works. Um, so uh, let's jump into a demo. Uh, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and move over to a full screen share and then you can see everything. Okay, so um, this is going to be with a um, framework that many of you have, may have heard about called Amber. Uh, Amber is uh, like Lucky or Kemal or a lot of the crystal web frameworks. Um, I've chosen Amber because it was most familiar to me when I jumped over to start exploring it uh, and similar to the Rails world. Um, but uh, I have a little framework here, uh, and I'm going to show you how we can integrate Amber and Svelte to get some really, really, really powerful things happening. Uh, I have a little shake and bake stuff on the side here, so I'm just going to pull that up so I can make sure that I know what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to start here with a very, very simple uh, controller in Amber. This is in Crystal. Uh, and it's, a, it's a straightforward uh, home controller. Uh, it does one very simple thing. Um, you uh, come back uh, to the browser with the very simple text, hello world. So we can see that uh, we have hello world there. Um, I have put together a little framework that will integrate Svelte into Amber. Um, and we do it very simply by changing, instead of calling this, uh, we do something called Celestite Render. My framework is called Celestite. Um, I'll give some more details about that. Similar to Celestine, which another one of the presenters talked about. Um, but 
Um, we have a very simple uh, component here called index.svelte. Um, we do not use ECR templates. Um, it, this loads Svelte components directly. So we're going to show you, I'm going to paste in a very, 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 very simple Svelte component over here. So you can see how this works. And I'm going to delete a little bit of stuff and we're going to rebuild this very shortly. I have some very basic styling. Svelte components are super simple. Uh, HTML styled components. Um, this is an example of a Svelte component. There's a script component, there's a style component, and then there is your actual, uh, your actual HTML. So let's save the controller. Let's save our Svelte component. And assuming everything in the world is happily playing with me, uh, this should reload. Very good. Okay. So a uh, couple things are going on here. This is very, very simple looking, but there's actually a bunch of stuff going on under the hood. Um, we are uh, rendering this component on the server. We actually have spun up a separate node server to do that. Um, and I'll get into some of the architecture in a few minutes. Um, getting back the compiled Svelte code, pulling it back to the front end, back to our crystal server, sending it down to the front end. Um, so you can see here, this supports live reloading. So if we do double exclamation point, it will live reload and show you that in real time. Okay, very, very, very simple. Great. So let's add some of the component based structure here. I've created a second component. We're calling it the best component in the world. Um, and we can import it very, very simply by calling a little import statement in our component. Best component in the world. By the way, quick little aside, um, I use a browser plugin, uh, a, a VS Code plugin called Tab9. Uh, this is a whole, whole separate conversation, which we can go into. It's amazing. Um, it does. It uses GPT-2 to do uh, text prediction, uh, which is pretty amazing. But we're going to import our best component in the world here. And then we're just going to add a very simple little the best component in the world tag. And what will happen is we've automatically brought in this component, the best component in the world. It's rendering nice, very simple, pretty straightforward. Now, again, this is all we're making requests to our Amber server. It is automatically rendering this Svelte stuff uh, behind the scenes. Um, one thing I should point out, one of the things that I really, really, really love about uh, using uh, frameworks like this is the CSS is scoped. Uh, which means you can see here that this is my very, very basic CSS here for my main component. I have, I'm not using any crazy classes. I have an H1 color blue and over here I have an H2 color green, but I could also turn this into an H1. And what you'll find is that these two styles don't conflict with each other. Um, it's, uh, I have to tell this to do H1 also. And this will be green as well. So even though I have a very, very simple H1 here without any classes or anything, and I have a very, very simple H1 here, Svelte automatically splits up the CSS in between your components, uh, which makes life so, so, so much easier. Um, OK, so now that we've added that, let's actually get into some of the fun stuff, which is some of the reactivity. Uh, I'm going to show you the way Svelte uh, does reactivity. It's so easy. I love it. it makes me really happy. So we're going to go and we're going to say we're going to add let name equals Joe blogs. That's how you declare a name there. And we're going to put in a very simple little H3 here that says hello. And this is it name. And it's just going to say hello Joe blogs. That is how Svelte does uh, variables and reactivity. Okay, that's not reactive, um, but it's showing you that you can actually declare variables. Those variables are automatically getting rendered. Let's make it reactive. Uh, the way you do this is, again, so easy. It makes me so happy. Um, we can make a input. Uh, and the way we do that here is, uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to get too into the details of the Svelte um, uh, uh, syntax, but by typing input and I'm binding the value of the input to the name variable, 
what we are automatically doing is attaching this input to this uh, name variable. And I can now go train, change it and say, hello, Crystal Indies. So that's real time. You can see it updates it automatically. Beautiful. Again, uh, this is super cool because um, you know makes life uh, fantastic. It makes uh, integrating with uh, any type of reactive stuff um, even easier. Um, all right, let's go back and let's show you one other thing. Let's say we want to do some database work. Let's say we want to actually uh, render some data and do some processing on the server. We can do that as well. So I'm going to add to my controller a little bit here. And let's do, let's create some data. And we're just going to say that some data equals one plus one. Fine, really easy. This is going to happen when you call um, the controller, when you go to your home route on Crystal. This is happening in Crystal. And again, this could be a database call. This could be anything that's happening right here. And we're going to re render some data. And then I'm going to pop in a little bit of custom stuff here related to this framework. Um, and this is called, we're setting the context. So basically I'm putting this data into a hash and then I'm gonna render again with the context. So now we're sending this data from the crystal server down to the client um, uh, into our uh, uh, component, uh, rather, rather down to our uh, uh, render server uh, where our component is here. Um, and now I've got to add a little bit of boilerplate, but just a tiny bit in order to make that reactive on the client. And I'm just going to go and paste in this code to do that. Um, it's a few lines of code. I wish it were not as much, but we're going to make it nice and simple. And now we can add our component and add some data from the server. So this is data. Again, we are calculating one plus one. We're sending it to our Svelte renderer. And then we're basically, this is the way we receive it. Um, and then we're going to render it on the client. And if everything happens the way it's supposed to, data from server is two. That's coming down from our crystal server, sending over to our Svelte render server, then coming down to our client, um, which is super cool. Um, OK, the next thing and the last thing and that I'm going to show you uh, as we build up this slightly more complicated demo app is the way that uh, our server handles server side rendering um, and what we call client side hydration. These are pretty uh, esoteric terms in the front end world, but makes things very, very, very powerful. Um, one thing that I should point out is that everything that you're seeing um, in this demo screen right here uh, is simultaneously rendered on the server um, and rendered on the client. So uh, I'm sorry, I should, I should clarify. First rendered on the server, the HTML is sent to the client, and then the Svelte library automatically, what's called hydrates it, attaches to the client, uh, and then gives you some reactivity there. So if we actually look at our source code here, uh, it's a little messy, but you can see this does not look like a typical front page, single page app. Um, what you see here actually is you are getting this text that is coming down from the server. Um, and Svelte handles all of this uh, reactivity once it hits the client. Um, but it makes for loading super, super, super quick because you don't have this, and I'm sure you've all experienced this with, front, with uh, single page apps, uh, where you have this loading icon because basically your HTML, all it does is boot up some JavaScript, which then sends some JSON out behind the scenes. This pre-renders everything on the server, sends it back to our crystal server, sends it back to the client, um, and then you get this uh, really cool, uh, really instant and really fast reloads. All right, so let's do our last piece of this demo here. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit for a few moments about architecture. And then we can uh, we can go further here. So um, let's talk about, uh, let's see here, make sure that we've got this happening here. Uh, let's talk about, um, I'm just going to paste this in. Give me just one moment. We're going to render the time. And we're going to basically say current time is a new date. And we're going to add a little bit of code here that handles mounting uh, on the client side. 
uh, basically we are importing the on mount method, which makes something happen on the client, but not on the server. And then uh, we're going to set up so that when the client loads, it automatically calls on mount and refreshes it every 100 milliseconds. So let's now go into the client and let's take a look at what the time is on the client. It's a tag there and boom. So what we've done here is we have rendered the time on the server, sent the data down to the client, and then we're calling this on mount when, the, when it mounts on the client, it's gonna set an interval every 100 milliseconds, it's gonna reset the time, and we now have this reactive, you know, dynamic uh, uh, front end component. Um, so that's it on the demo side of things. Uh, let's move back to, uh, let's go back to the presentation and I can show you guys a little bit about the architecture and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. Um, okay, so uh, I have a little project that I'd love to share with everyone uh, that's going to let you do what I just showed you here. Um, I'm calling it Celestite. Celestite is a reactive crystal. You see what I did there? Um, you can uh, access it uh, at nlh.me slash projects slash Celestite. It's also got a GitHub repo. Um, you can read all about it there. Very simply, what Celestite does, this is not a complex framework and um, the code is bad uh, because I'm an amateur and I'd love you folks to take a look at it and learn a little bit and help me with it. Um, but uh, basically what it does is sends a request to our Amber server. And by the way, it doesn't have to be Amber. It could be Kamal, it could be Lucky, it could be Athena, any type of server, as long as you can make that Celestite render call. And then all it does is spin up a little node server, which handles my Svelte, and it uses a Svelte uh, a sub project called Sapper, um, renders the HTML, sends it back to our server, and then sends it back to your client. Very, very, very simple. So Celestite is just this half of the screen. Um, it's basically a bunch of glue stuff, probably no more than a thousand lines of, of uh, combination JavaScript and crystal code, um, but it works and it lets you build uh, pretty cool client side apps uh, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, where could this go in the future? Uh, I think, you know, probably the most inefficient part of this framework is that it's spinning up a separate node process. I don't love that. Um, I think the node process is uh, is a little bit uh, a little bit difficult to handle, but um, uh, it uh, it works. Um, so in the future, I could imagine uh, a world where uh, we have um, uh, 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 built in maybe V8 using the C bindings or duct tape, which is another JavaScript library, and it could do uh, it could do the rendering within an entire crystal process. You know, right now, I think a typical uh, render cycle takes, you know, two milliseconds uh, as opposed to raw uh, queries to the crystal server, which are on the order of under one millisecond, you know, hundreds of microseconds. Um, so look, I'm, I'm happy with a two millisecond render. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, we're all nerds here. We all want to make things better. And if we can get that down, we can get it down. And I think as this scales, we might want to figure out how to incorporate this directly in the C bindings. Um, but anyway, that's it. Uh, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, I'll move into some Q&A and we'll discuss some, uh, some other stuff. Here's some links. Uh, feel free to get in touch. You can email me. I'm pretty fast with my email. Um, I've got a little blog set up uh, at nlh.me. You can read about uh, this project. I have an introductory blog post there. Um, link to, this, uh, uh, to the actual Celestite uh, repository on GitHub. And of course, uh, since I've gotten you all excited about Svelte, you can read about Svelte on svelte.dev. Uh, and that, everyone, is all I have to say about that. I'm two minutes over, but uh, hope, hope that's okay. Wow, super. That was super cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so do we have any, any questions? I hope, I hope we do. Uh, so uh, I guess we're going to see if we have any q and I'm not sure if the following, Martin, I, I'm not sure if I can hear you, but uh, I'm here. I'm happy to answer any questions in the eight minutes that we've got. Um, I've got some folks here yeah, on the chat, and I'm not, uh, let's see, we have Q&A. Okay. Um, 
Can't, uh, Brian, can't the result from the node process be reused for different context values? Uh, probably, we should talk about that offline because uh, I want to understand more about the idea, but definitely makes like uh, makes a lot of sense for sure. Um, uh, yes, and Kevin mentions, uh, there's another framework. Yeah, so there is a, uh, the only one that I can think of is Airbnb released something, I think it was called Hyperloop. Um, I, I, I mentioned the name. Uh, which I think was something similar um, and uh, uh, lets you do this kind of thing. It's much more complicated than this. You know, it handles a lot more error checking, but it's the architecturally very similar. Spin up a separate process, send your requests out, send them back. Um, uh, is there a browser caching story for Svelte? Uh, that is an excellent question. I don't know the answer to that, um, but uh, I'm sure there's a really, really active Svelte community and um, we can find out about that. Uh, it's a great question. Um, uh, Robert, how does the crystal to node process work when this is deployed in production? Also an excellent question. I have not yet deployed this in a larger scale production instance. Um, I think uh, it really depends on how you're going to deploy it. I'll tell you how I'm planning on deploying this. Um, I'm going to use something like Google Cloud Run to spin up uh, a Docker container, and then you can run uh, the, the node instance within basically the same Docker container. Uh, I think in a more traditional single process production uh, uh, environment, uh, it's probably not going to be optimal. I think in this case, you really want to have the uh, node process running on a local, uh, on the same uh, machine that your uh, crystal process is running. And I know that can get into problems when you, you know, when you're dealing with Kubernetes and things like that in larger scale production. But these are some of the issues that I'm super excited to uh, explore. So this is all fun stuff and we'll, we'll get into all of it more. Um, I'm going to repeat uh, what I mentioned earlier. You know, I would really love feedback, ideas, contributions, mistakes, um, you know, all this stuff, uh, hop over to, you know, send me an email, hop over to the GitHub repo, um, file some issues, play with this, tell me how it's broken. Um, I can imagine, I kind of feel like lawnmower man, you know, the more that uh, uh, folks tell me where I'm wrong and how we can improve it, the more I'm going to understand the process. Um, and the last thing that I'd say is I really want to encourage other people who are beginners and who are learning about web development to participate, um, file an issue, you know, submit a request, um, you know, put some code in there. I think that was, um, I think that would be really, uh, really helpful and it would be really great. And I, I want to certainly help others the way that, you know, some of my mentors have helped me. Um, okay. Uh, Kevin says Alpine. I, not sure I know what Alpine is, um, but I, we should certainly check it out. Um, and by the way, that doesn't speak to anything about Alpine. It just speaks to me not knowing about it. Um, uh, okay, can you render Celestite inside other HTML already rendered from Crystal versus just the, versus just the whole page being rendered? Uh, Michael Wagner asked that question. Um, it sounds like an interesting idea. Uh, probably the answer is yes, we should explore it. Um, love if you send me an email about that or maybe post in uh, GitHub um, and we can talk through that. It's a great idea um, and I'd, I'd love to explore it. Um, I think the other thing is... Um, there's uh, there's uh, we've got some community wise. There's a Discord. Uh, there's a Crystal Gitter. There's an unofficial Crystal Discord, and then there's a Svelte Discord where I think folks are super active. I try to hang out on all of them. Um, I like to be easily reachable by folks. Um, so uh, uh, any time a real chat, any real time chat would be totally fine. Uh, yes, uh, Solomon asks, can uh, Celestet use a build tool like Webpack or Gulp? to render Svelte or similar uh, rather than interfacing with Node directly. It actually does use Webpack. Um, so what happens, uh, and, and the question is, could we do it directly? Yeah, I bet you we probably could. I actually think that was one of the early ideas uh, that I had, and then I wanted to get something live. Um, it's actually a really good idea because I think if you can just do a simple build um, rather than, if you don't need a Node server running, I think it's probably wasteful. So it's a, it's a really, really, really good idea. Um, what happens right now is effectively the node server is just sitting and waiting. It's got Webpack, and then every time Crystal makes a change, it triggers a, a recompilation on the on the uh, node server. So I don't know that there's a real reason other than if you need some libraries that only run in Node. I think probably the best advantage that you can have there is having a live node server gives you the power to do that. Is it strictly speaking required? No, I don't think so. And I think there there's some op optimizations that we could do there. 
Um, Jack asks, does Svelte need to be compiled on every request or just when the context changes? Uh, and I think the answer is absolutely just when the context changes. So that's a huge optimization. We could probably, I think that's the, what Brian was mentioning earlier, we could probably reuse um, and save some of the recompilation time. These are all amazingly cool ideas and I'm now super excited to go implement all this uh, and make this rather than just something that I can show, make it something that actually works and works fast. So. Uh, I'm going to forget everything until I rewatch this talk. So send me an email or post in one of the chats and let's do all these things and you guys can help.